Hi everyone, I am Jack McMorrow. I am a family law attorney in Los Angeles with the law firm of Harris Ginsburg. Thank you for joining me. This is a 10 minute mentor video that is uh, being done in connection with the CLE program I put on with a partner at our law firm, Fahi Takesh Hallen. Um, the CLE is entitled the Complete Prenuptial Agreement. It covers all things that have to do with uh, creating uh, a enforceable prenuptial agreement and representing your client throughout that process. And it's labeled the 2020 edition because it has some important updates and current law that the drafters need to keep in mind. So thank you for joining me and uh, let's get started. So what are we doing when we are drafting a prenuptial agreement? Well, what we're doing is we are actually contracting our clients out of the binding contract that they automatically enter into by virtue of getting married. It's said that marriage is the most important contract and most substantial contract that you'll enter into in your life without reading. Um, and so the people who come to you are looking to be educated about the law. What is that contract that I'm going to be entering into? And maybe what, what are the changes that I want to make? Um, I'll let you know that a lot of people who are going to be coming to you are people who maybe don't know whether or not they want a prenuptial agreement. It's important that your process in representing them is starts with educating them, telling them what is the law, what are they going to get if they don't enter into the prenuptial agreement. And in fact, learning all of that and being able to tell that to the client um, will help you because it's exactly those things that you're gonna be either uh, amending or revoking or drafting around um, in, in making the prenuptial agreement. So day one, the client meets with you, question, first question you have to be asking them is, when do you get married? It's essential that you know when they get married. And a lot of family law practitioners are lit in litigation. Generally, what we're doing is looking at when is trial, when is the next hearing, when are documents due. The marriage date sets your deadline. That is your timeline. And you got to count back because in uh, enforceable prenuptial agreements, and in, as you see in the presentation that we put on, all of it has to do with what is provided for in the Uniform Premarital Agreement Act. And there are very uh, specific terms that need to be obeyed, um, or rather procedural uh, tasks that need to be completed in a timely manner in order for your premarital agreement to be enforceable. And the important code sections on that are Family Law Code Section 1612 and also um, Family Code Section one six one five. So your client tells you when they're going to get married, then you need to count back. You need to have your final, final draft. This was the most recent update that you need to have a final draft of the premarital agreement seven days before it's signed. And as a matter of practice, we like to have the premarital agreement signed also seven days before the wedding. So when do you need your final draft? That means seven plus seven, it's two weeks out from the date, okay? And um, in order to get there, you need to plan accordingly. And so that means you, you know, need to be thinking about, do I want this client? Because if they are asking you to do a rush job on a premarital agreement, you know, those are the kind of things you want to get away from because of the uh, implications of this contract that you're going to be having them sign into. If you're waiving spousal support, if you are uh, waiving community property, things that are really going to really have a substantial impact on this person's 
financial uh, future and reality in the event of a separation, well, you know, that's when the malpractice claim comes and that's when uh, the client feels like they aren't served. It might not be now, but 20 years from now, the, uh, you know, the, the short period of time that you allowed yourself and you did a rush job, that's really gonna come back and it's gonna come back in spades. So um, consider you know, pushing it off, um, pushing off the wedding if you can ask your client to do that or, or just telling them that you can't, can't handle their matter because of the timing of it. Um, so the CLE that we put on will walk you through a bunch of the types of provisions that you can put into an agreement um, the family law code provides for a variety of things. There are so many uh, considerations and you can't necessarily, you know, contract for all of the issues, but certainly the central ones are community versus separate property, spousal support and um, fiduciary duty obligations, transmutation, and um, other things that are important, such as reimbursements. And, uh, you know, there are also a variety of unique ideas that all of the clients will often, you know, bring to you that something always novel. Uh, sometimes they want to contract about um, maybe adult child uh, support for college, um, stuff like that. So, you know, be ready to listen to them, ask them what they want. And in the, in the process for you is going to be, how do I get an idea? How do I keep this case moving forward? How do I figure out? Because you're going to be educating them. And it, I, I tell my clients, you know, it's essentially you're hungry. I'm going to feed you. And you're asking me what I have to eat, but you've never been into a grocery store. And so I'm going to walk you into the grocery store and show you what there is. Well, suddenly they start grabbing stuff that they weren't initially hungry for. You know, the only things that, you know, they need are in aisle one, but suddenly they're walking down aisle two, three, and, and now their shopping carts full and it, it gets to be a mess, you know. So um, you got to come up with your own system. How are you going to get them to know or how are you and your client going to get on the same page as to how uh, what provisions are going to be in the agreement? At our firm, we have a sort of a handout that has sort of a check yes, check no. Let me know what, what things you do or don't want in your agreement. You know, sometimes I use that. I don't always use that. Sometimes it's very obvious what people want. Uh, sometimes it's not so obvious. So um, sometimes, you know, clients aren't sure whether they want something. Uh, so I'll hand them the, the memo and outline, let them go home and think about whether they want to do this or that. And it's also a really good device because, you know, they need to be talking about what provisions are going to go into this agreement with their spouse. All the cost with a prenuptial agreement, how it spins out of control, how it gets expensive has to do with the process. If you do not uh, manage it well, you're going to draft a premarital agreement. You're going to hand it to opposing counsel or opposing party, and they're going to come back to you and say, this doesn't reflect our agreement. This isn't what I want to do. Um, so uh, you got to keep that in mind and be planning to manage your case because it, this is drafting, but there is an art to it and it, it has to do with managing clients. I will say that I got married about two years ago and it, it really changed my understanding of what my client is going through. You know, they have a lot going on as they're going into the, uh, the wedding date and they don't want, and they might not have the ability to address all the issues that you want to address down the stretch. And it's really tough. Families coming into town and they don't want to have to come into the office and sign a document um, that, you know, they're still at odds on. So um, I, I encourage you to listen to the CLE. It's, it's very thorough. What I've given you here is a lot of tips and tricks about managing the process and more of a discussion of what is it that we're doing with a premarital agreement. But I implore you to go, you know, watch the CLE. It has a lot of good stuff about technical issues and case law 
And it, the handout is really useful. It, it actually will give you a lot of the citations for the law that will help you understand it so that you can draft. Um, I appreciate your time. That's all I could pack into 10 minutes and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and thank you.